There we go. Hi. Hello, everyone, and happy Friday. I hope you are had or you had a great week and welcome to the almost weekend. Hi, my name is Carly Bell, and I love to get together with you guys um, some Fridays to do a machine embroidery tutorial from start to finish that we call Sip and Stitch. So I got my coffee. And how can everyone hear me? I know I probably already bumped into my microphone, but can everybody hear me okay? I'm just going to check the chat real quick. Good morning, Joe and Sanella and BJ and Karen and Donna. Thank you all so much for joining me today. Happy Friday. Okay, so I hope y'all are all doing good. It's been a while, right? So um, if you've been following me for a while, we usually get together for Sip and Stitch live every other Friday. However, the fall is just jam packed with really fun things for me. So for the rest of the year, we have changed it to we're going to meet once a month and that's going to be the third Friday of every month. So today, September um, 22nd is the I think it's the third Friday. I might have messed this one up, but <laughs> um, this is our sip and stitch for September. Um, lots of fun stuff that's been going on just last week had a jam-packed week of um, participating in sewingmachineplus.com. They do a live virtual event every fall called SewFest. So I was able to teach a class and do some other video uh, machine demonstrations for them last week. That was a lot of fun. Um, if you uh, watched the class that we took, it was on how to make patches and I gave everyone a free patch download. And now that I'm thinking about it, where did I put my patch? Did we put it? Here it is. Okay. Yeah. So um, this is the patch. Let me put it over here so you can see. Um, this is the patch we made for SoFest. It says, I'm so fancy. And if you didn't get this already, this is a free download. So if you go to my website, carlybell.com, and you scroll down to the um, to the bottom of the page, you'll see SMP projects and you click there and that's going to show you all the stuff I've done for them. And this the link to this is on there. So just go to carlybell.com and you should see that um, if you want to go get the free download for this patch. And you can also they'll have the video replay there um, where you can watch the class on how we actually made it. So that was a really fun project I did last week. And then I also participated in my first online summit. And this was a huge like plethora of different crafting areas. So they had sewing, they had crochet, they had um, pattern making. Um, some really interesting things were um, specific to projects where you have zero waste when cutting your pattern out of your fabric. Um, so some really interesting stuff I participated in last week called the um, Design Pattern Create Summit. Um, so for those of y'all that joined us last week for that, I hope you enjoyed it. Um, and let's see what we have coming up next. Next, we have the Applique Getaway is going to be in October. And that is a really fun, like, and. I call it like an embroidery convention um, or what do they call them? Uh, I forget the other expo, like a, an expo. So I've gone to these in person and um, they take place usually in Dallas every summer. Um, however, a few years ago when the pandemic started, um, they had a virtual event um, since we couldn't get together in person and they've kept it up every year and it's really, really fun. 
And so that's going to open up in October. I want to say the 20th. Um, and you can register now. I don't remember if I put a link down below. I'll try to do it after the live today. I'll put a link for registration. I know I put it on my Facebook page already, um, but it's only $25 and you get tons of all kinds of good classes. So I'll be teaching a class on applique and getting into the nitty gritty of it and how you can make yours um, stand out and get it really professional looking. Um, but they're also going to be digitizing classes from Lisa Shaw and in brilliance classes from Lisa Shaw. There are going to be um, classes on, I believe, sublimation and using um, uh, in the hoop projects and all kinds of good stuff from all kinds of awesome teachers. So y'all make sure to check that out, the applique getaway. I will try to remember to put a link after the video, but um, I'm pretty sure it's on my Facebook page if you go look there. Um, all right. Oh, and Joe asked a good question. So is there a Zoom next Tuesday? So yes. Yeah, so she's referring to um, my Sip and Stitch Squad VIP membership group. So this is a monthly subscription um, group that I have where when you join, it's only $9 a month and you get a private Zoom class with me every month and we approach a different topic every month and you get a free embroidery design download. Um, the other great thing when you join is you get access to all of our previous class um, replays, all the recordings of our previous classes. So there's a whole library of different topics from um, applique in the hoop. Uh, I have some embrilliance classes, some digitizing with stitch artist classes, um, all kinds of good stuff. And then a whole library of embroidery designs that you can go download. So our next Zoom meeting for the VIP membership group is going to be next Tuesday. I think that's September 26th. Um, it's going to be at 1030 in the morning, just like now in central time. And we are going to dive more into patches. So the, the class I did for Sewing Machines Plus was kind of a very general, this is how to make this specific patch and, and just kind of like an intro. So for the VIP group, we are going to dive into patches and how to create your own custom patches with designs that you already have or designs that you can make with fonts you have um, already. And it's all through Embrilliance using their Merrily program. And their free design this month is our special Sip and Stitch Squad patch. So this is their free design for the month and we'll go through how to make this specific patch, but then we're really gonna dive into In Brilliance Merrily and learn how to create your own custom patches, how to get different looks, um, whether they are all thread or with fabric, um, whether you cut them after you've stitched out everything. So lots of fun stuff. Um, we're going to go through in Tuesday Zoom class. So if you're not already a member, um, you can join up now. Um, I think there is a link down below in the description, the Sip and Stitch Squad VIP membership group. Um, it's only $9 a month and you get those classes and designs with me every month and then access to all of our previous library of stuff over two years um, worth of tutorials. So it's really good. So that's Tuesday for my squad members. All right, so I think that's it for my announcement. Stay tuned for more info on my holiday workshop that I hold. This will be the third year um, of holding a holiday workshop. That's coming in November. Um, so stay tuned for more information on that. That's a really fun, like a week long of holiday um, projects that we do um, a class on. All right, so, okay, Kim said, what time on Tuesday? 10.30 um, Central Standard Time in the morning. And of course, it's always recorded, so you can watch the replay whenever you want. All right. Okay, so let's jump into today's class. Very, very excited about today's class. Um, this was something that I saw from another um, Facebook group member. Um, I can't remember what group I was in when I saw it, but it had a beautiful picture, and I'm going to show you. So this is my inspiration picture. Where would this be? Here. All right. This is the inspiration picture that I saw on Facebook and one of the embroidery groups I'm in. And someone posted it saying, how would I make this? So I 
fell in love with this picture and I was like, oh, I absolutely love this. Now, from my inspection of it, it appears that it is felt that has been cut with a cutting machine and hand stitched. If you zoom in and really look at the stitching, this is hand stitched um, onto a sweatshirt um, with hand embroidery. So that is what I saw and I fell in love with it. And I also apologize. Someone took a screenshot and posted it on Facebook. And then I know it's got to be from Etsy. I went and looked on Etsy. I cannot find this picture to save my life. <laughs> so I can't tell you, unfortunately, which shop it is from. But they obviously make beautiful, beautiful things. So my first thought was, OK, how can I create something like this on my embroidery machine and not hand stitching? So I played with this for weeks and tried different things. And one of the first things that I thought is, well, I, first, I need to find a really good font, a, an, a machine embroidery font that I can buy that looks like hand stitching. So the first person I called um, is my friend, Lindsay. And let me find this picture. OK, um, I called my friend Lindsay at Lenny Penny. Um, she actually is the organizer of the applique getaway. Um, and I got to hang out with her this past summer when I went to the in-person um, event. And she is an amazing digitizer. She has a gorgeous shop with all kinds of cute stuff. And she's really good at making fonts because not only does she make these beautiful fonts, but she is now making them to where they work specifically. The BX version works in Embrilliance and is a native font. So what that means is normally when we buy a font and it comes in BX format and we install it in our Embrilliance Essentials program, we get several sizes with it, right? Like we'll get half inch, three quarters of an inch, one inch, one and a half, two, and so on. Like usually we'll get like five or six sizes um, that come with the purchase. Well, with Lenny Penny's new fonts that say BX native on it, you just get one file. You install it in Embrilliance and it's native to the program, just like the ones that came with Embrilliance Essentials when you bought it so that they are sizable. And so they are going to allow you to shrink it as small as the program will allow you to and stretch it out as big as you can um, that the program, again, will allow. It will stop you when it's like, OK, this is too much. <laughs> um, so these fonts are amazing. So she told me she actually had a font um, kind of like what I wanted, and she was about to release some new ones. So she just released them, I think, this past week, some um, beautiful new fonts. And she gave me a coupon code. So this is for y'all. This is um, for 50% off um, using the coupon code Carly. You do have to put $10 worth of stuff into your cart before the discount will work. Um, so then it will knock it down to five. Um, however, it is not valid on the new releases because the new releases are already on sale for 60% off. So you get a better deal um, on those new releases. But if you see some other things you like, um, like one of the examples I'm going to have for you is um, a chain stitch uh, font. That's an old one. So you can use the coupon code on that. Um, but this is an awesome coupon she gave us. Use coupon code Carly. And it's good through September 30th of 2023. All right. And I have a link to all the fonts that we're using in the description box below. But let me show you. And then I'm going to show you these different fonts. And then we're going to dive into all the different ways that we can get this felt applique um, look. All right. So let me check the comments. Any questions so far? All right. Anita says she loves the, the inspiration um, photo as well. Yay. OK. All right, here we go. Leanne has a good question. Can you use these fonts with So What Pro? You can, when you purchase the font, it will come in all the different formats. It will come in PES and um, in SEW or EXP or whatever kind of machine you use. It will come in all of those formats as a normal font would where each letter is an individual file. But it will also come with BX format. Now, BX format is specific for Embrilliance. So you will not be able to install the BX version of the font into your So What Pro um, software, but you will be able to open the PES or any of the other formats um, 
within your so what pro so what pro program but it's going to go back to the okay this is a half inch in size or this is one inch in size um so then you're you're back to okay i'm using the font and the size that i want and you might be able to size it a little bit in so what pro but it won't be native to the program like if as if you had in brilliance but you can still purchase it and you can still use it it's just that whole native part of it and resizing um to it's like maximum and minimum, you won't be able to do in Sew It Pro. Okay. <laughs> Norma, happy birthday, Norma. She's got birthday money to spend. Um, all right, is the felt washable? Yes. So I am using polyester craft felt and I'm gonna go through my whole procedure with you on how I make it better for your shirt so that it stays and doesn't crumple up and looks good, okay? I'm gonna go through all of that for you. Um, all right, I see S. Mott. So hi from Louisiana. Hi, I'm from Louisiana too. <laughs> um, you can't find the free download on the website. Um, are you talking about the free download for the I'm So Fancy patch? Tell me if that's what you're talking about. Um, you have to go to my website, carlybell.com, scroll all the way to the bottom where you see the SMP projects and it says, get more info, click that. Then you'll see some of the projects. Click the I'm So Fat, uh, the So Fest 2023. And then when you're in there, there should be a button to download this for free, okay? Um, and then it sends you to a place where you gotta put in your email and it gets emailed to you. Um, what was your other question? The login link on the site. Um, so I'm guessing you're talking about like the member and the student login I put on my site now. If you're on your phone, you're not going to see it at the top, but you're going to see the three little hamburger lines. Click that and that expands the menu. And so you'll see in the menu, it will say member and student login. Um, if you're on a laptop or desktop, it, you'll be able to see it at the top. But if you're on a phone, you got to click those three little lines. All right. Hope that helps you. All right. Okay, so let's get moving on. Let's go to the craft table. All right, so I got some examples for you. So this was my first project. This was um, using a font I already had from Lenny Penny. This is a chain stitch font. I think it's called Ribbon, Ribbon Chain Stitch. I have a link for that one down below. So this is one I bought um a long time ago and um i thought okay well this will be pretty let's let's try this one out i'm going to go through this whole procedure with you today so with this i used my silhouette cameo cutting machine and the silhouette software um program i have the business edition and i created the cut line to go around it and I'm going to go through this whole procedure with you today. So with this look, I have options for you. So this is for someone that has a cutting machine. If you have a brother scan and cut, then it's no problem. That's all you need. It's just the brother scan and cut. The software is already made to where you can import your embroidery design. Um, if you have a silhouette cameo, you are going to need the business edition of the Silhouette Studio program. And that is going to allow you to open up an embroidery design. If you have a Cricut, I don't know if a Cricut can open embroidery designs. And I've been playing with Embrilliance to see if I could create an SVG, but I haven't had a lot of luck. So if you have a Cricut, I don't have a solution for you right now, but I'm still, I'm gonna keep playing with it till I can figure it out to where you can do it on a Cricut um, as well. But basically, I created the embroidery design in Embrilliance, and I'm a, we're going to do that today, and saved it, and then opened it up in my cutting software and created the, the outline to go around it. So we're going to do this project today, but we're going to use a different font. So Lindsay came out with the same font, the ribbon. However, instead of it being a chain stitch like this one, it is now a um, hand looking, um, stitch. 
now. So this is the same font ribbon, but now it is more of a hand stitched look instead of the chain stitch. So you see the difference? All right, so option number one to get this look is to have a cutting machine and, and have the ability to open up an embroidery design in your cutting uh, machine's software. Option number two, you don't have a cutting machine, okay? You just have an embroidery machine. You can still get this look. It's just a little bit harder. It's, it takes a little bit more, more uh, time and that you are going to be cutting it out yourself, all right? So with this, I had a cutting machine make all this for me. So I got it to where I think it looks nice and offset. There is still some trickiness though to it to make sure that we put the felt right where we want it to be um, when it stitches on it. This, there's no trickiness to it because I literally just before I did anything, I loaded, I, I for this project, I'm just practicing. So I just have some cutaway stabilizer and I just made the name using Embrilliance Embrill Essentials, saved it as a PES design, plugged it in my machine, right? So very, very simple. Before I started stitching, I laid a piece of felt on top of my whatever project you're making. Um, now, you're not gonna get a placement stitch to show you where to put your felt. So I literally put a big old piece of felt here to make sure I would cover where it's gonna stitch. And then I trimmed it into a square after, all right? Um, so just lay your felt over the project before you even start and stitch directly on top of the felt. Once you've done that and you take your project off the machine, you know, so say this was on a sweatshirt, then you're just going to take your applique scissors and you're going to just trim however you, you want it to look. So this is totally personal preference here on how far away I cut from the stitching and, you know, just going around. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not trying to get close. I want it to be like a big offset. So I can do something like this. Oh, I forgot to mention before you have to prep your felt before you start. All right. And I did that by ironing heat and bond light onto the back. I didn't do it for these, but I did it. The one that we're going to make the sweatshirt with today. Um, you are going to want to iron heat and bond light on the back of your felt before you use it and stitch on top of it. That is going to be the key so that when you're done, we are going to press this to your sweatshirt or sweater, whatever you're stitching on. Um, so then the felt is going to stay um, in place, kind of, you know, just same principle as with, um, with applique. I always um, add heat and bond light onto the back of my applique fabric before I use it to fill an applique. So you can see this is just totally random. I'm, I'm just figuring this out as I go on how I want to cut it. And it doesn't have to be perfect. I'm trying to get it to be to where it's somewhat the same distance between the edge of the felt and the, the stitching. But to be honest, it's going to look good no matter if it's, if it's um, even if you got spots where it's a little bit closer to the thread, um, it's going to look good. All right. So there's your option if you don't have a cutting machine, you literally will just pick your felt color of choice, iron heat and bond light on the back. So this is, this is what it looks, looks like. Um, it's got the purple. Um, and this is some, uh, something that you iron with the rough textured side. So say this was the felt I was prepping. This is the, the front of the felt, the back, it doesn't matter because it's the same on both sides. I would put this on the back of the felt like this and iron it and then leave it. Uh, if you're doing this method, 
then you're gonna, once it's ironed and on there, you can peel the paper backing off and now you will have a fusible layer on the back of your um, self that is safe for your embroidery machine to stitch through. And so have your felt prepped, lay it over the area, make sure that you think it's gonna cover the whole name um, and then stitch on top of it, trim it how you want and then press it with an iron. Maybe put a, um, a piece of parchment paper over it, but press it um, really good. So now you've activated the heat and bond on the back of the felt and now it will stay good when it washes and it won't curl up, okay? All right, so I see someone saying, why not ultra hold? Because, so this is heat and bond light. They also make heat and bond ultra. Let me grab mine. It comes, the packaging looks red. So this is heat and bond ultra. Um, this is a better adhesive, yes. However, your machine will not like stitching through this. This is too strong to stitch through. All right, so I wouldn't recommend using this for the back of the felt because you still have to stitch through it and it's going to gum up your needle. So that's why I go with light and that's why I also use light for all of my applique projects as well. All right, very good question. Because you'd be tempted to, to make sure the felt stays, but it's good. All right, where was I? Okay, so that was option number two. Option number three, is a really nice new applique font. And I apologize, it's not showing up good on my camera. This is a new applique font from Lenny Penny. So we went over ribbon. This is ribbon hand stitch, ribbon chain stitch. This is, what is this called? I've already, I'm gonna mess it up. Let me look it up. It is stitchy. Let me look. Um, stitchy applique. Yes, that's what it's called. Uh, let me get this back how it's supposed to look. Okay, um, so Stitchy Applique. This is a newly released um, font from Lenny Penny, and I want to tell you why it's amazing. You're going to get the look, but it's a little bit different. But the thing I really want you to pay attention to, so this looks great with felt, but you can also do this with any material you want. And if you've ever played with an applique font before, especially a cursive applique font, you'll notice that the letters will always have an ending on it, right? So you see at the end of this E, there's a stitching, but look right here between the E and the L. They are connected. It flows completely. This font is so cool because when you use it, now this is going to be specific for and brilliance. That is going to give you um, the look. Now, I'm sure, I didn't look at the PES version of it. I'm sure she has it options. Um, I'll have to go, I'll play with that once we switch over and I show y'all how to make this in Embrilliance. Um, But what I want you to pay attention to is how it flows, right? With this font, you have the ability to connect any of the letters and to make any of the letters that are at the front and the end to be closed off, right? So, this not only looks great with felt, but think about all your pretty patterned fabric. You can now let it flow and you won't have that um, separation between the letters, the stitching separating each letter, um, like I've seen previously with um, other cursive applique fonts. So that's what makes this font really, really special. And I'm very excited about it. This font works as any kind of typical applique font. First, there was a placement stitch showing you where to put your fabric. Next is the tack down and the finishing stitch is kind of the same, this blue one. And then there's a third stitch that gives you the line in the middle. So the one in the middle is optional. You cannot stitch that out if you want to and just have it be the overall outline. But um, what's fun when you're doing a solid fabric like this one that gives you a nice little accent um, color in the middle. All right. So this can be done with any embroidery machine. Um, you don't need a cutting machine because this is like a typical applique where I have a guide and I can 
cut this um, just like I would any other applique. So I'm not necessarily, now this depends on how you cut it too. I might not necessarily try to go for the offset look, um, but I could trim it just like I would any other bean stitch applique where I'm just cutting it a little bit away. Um, so that's totally up to you on how you want to cut it. If it's easier for you to just follow the stitching, you can do that. Um, and get into the grooves and everything. Or if you want more of that big offset look, you can decide to be like, okay, well, I'm just going to go around all of this and not try to get down in between the letters. So you can go for this kind of look as well um, if that's what you want to do. So your personal preference, you know, whether you want to get down in there or go around. But that is the third font I wanted to show you today, and I'm going to show you how to make it um, on in Brilliance. So any questions on the three fonts and the three different methods, um, embroidery machine and cutting machine, these are no cutting machine required. One, you don't have a placement stitch. You're just stitching right on top of felt. This one, you have a placement stitch and you can stitch on, um, you know, felt or material. To be honest, with any of these, you can you can also use um, some HTV um, if you wanted to. Some glitter HTV, this would be pretty on. Um, I, I would also like to try the embroidery vinyl. However, there would, with this one, like faux leather, like I have some really pretty like hologrammy ones and glittery ones. There's just no stitch to keep it down at the edges. And I don't typically put heat and bond light on the back of my faux leather because that is heat sensitive. So I have to play around with that, but I do, I have one solution, but that's going to require that you have some more um, software other than just in Brilliance Essentials. But I'll show you that option too, in case you have enthusiast and um, stitch artists. All right, so if you have any questions, put them in now so I could see them. But you can see how, you know, I played around with this. I either went down in between if you wanted to get close or if you just want that offset look, um, you can go around the letters like that as well. And again, this would have heat and bond light on the back. And when you're done trimming, you would press it. Okie dokie. So let me see. Um... All right, so Marsha has a really good question. So with the second one, the app, the stitchy applique, there are no capital letters. This particular font is all lowercase, so no capital letters. With the ribbon font, whether you get the hand stitch or the chain stitch, yes, it does come with capital letters. All right, Kelsey X, the same thing, yep only lowercase letters for that stitchy applique font. All right. Oh, Veronica said, where to get my steps? These are my favorite. Um, I got them from Sewing Machines Plus. I have a link for them down below. They're made by Havels and they're called embroidery snips. They are the best. I use them. I have them all over my craft room um, and they're really, really, really good. Um, and any of the supplies y'all buy at Sewing Machines Plus, you can use coupon code Carly Bell. And that will get you 10% off your purchase. All right. Oh, hi. Um, I don't know if I'm going to say your name right, Paya from Italy. Welcome. So exciting. Um, oh, the links for the fonts are not working. I'm so sorry, Karen. I think that's what someone meant maybe earlier when I was mis I misread the question. Um, I will go and fix those after... Um, the live is over. I apologize. Name of the third font again. It is called Stitchy Applique. Stitchy Applique. 
Um, Dawn asks, will the live be able to rewatch? Yes, all of my live tutorials are recorded and immediately after the live is over, you can watch the replay on my YouTube channel, okay? Um, so Joe X Merrily comes with Stitch Artist Level 3. Kind of. Um, a Marrow Stitch Edge comes with Stitch Artist Level 3, but Merrily, which we're going to be going over in the VIP group, is a separate add-on program for Embrilliance, and it not only gives you that edge stitch, but gives you all kinds of options for um, developing the patch. So it gives you the wraparound option, it gives you um, tons of different shapes, and it comes with like 28 fonts, um, which are great because they have them, the teeny tiny ones specific for making patches, um, which are really helpful, and like fonts specifically for using um, 60 weight uh, font, a uh, 60 weight thread, which is something you want to do when you're doing very small lettering. So we're going to be going over the Merrily program um, with Embrilliance. Um, Elsa said, was the white material? This is just cutaway stabilizer. So whenever I'm practicing or doing a, a test stitch, um, doing examples for classes, I will just stitch directly on cutaway um, stabilizer. Okay, thank you, Marissa. She said, I'm guessing with the links for the fonts, she said you have to copy and paste them for them to work. Thank you. Uh, all right, Zoranda said, where can I get the So Fancy patch? Just go to carlybell.com, scroll to the bottom, and look at SMP projects. You'll see a picture of the patch, okay? Um, yay. Okay, Karen is stoked. I love it. Love it, love it. All right. Yeah, so Laura, Laura is talking about the stitchy applique font, and we're going to go over this in Brilliant. So it only comes in lowercase, but we have to use capital letters to tell the program where we want the ends to be. Um, doo -doo -doo. Wait, I'm trying to read. So Anna says, is there a link in VIP for Embrilliant software to purchase? Um, I don't, there should be in the, um, in the member portal, but I'll double check on that for you, Anna. Um, okay, so Wendy's asking, can we show the sweatshirt? So this is a sweatshirt I made and we're gonna make another one today. So sorry, there's like a lot of, a lot of explanation I wanted to go over with y'all. I wanted to give you more options because I know not everyone has a cutting machine. Um, so, that's why I wanted to go over all these different options and these other fun fonts. So today I'm gonna to be creating another sweatshirt just like this, but I have a black one and it's football season guys. And I live in New Orleans. So I need an LSU sweatshirt and I need a Saints sweatshirt. So today we're making a Saints um, one. So I have both my Saturday and Sunday covered for the rest of the fall. <laughs> just hopefully it gets cool enough to where I could actually wear these comfortably. <laughs> Um, so we are going to be stitching um, a Saints felt applique now on my black sweatshirt. Um, so let's go over to Embrilliance. I'm also really excited. We're going to be stitching it on a new machine um, that I recently got. I upgraded. If y'all been following me for a while, y'all know I started on a really small flatbed machine the brother PE770, which they now have an 800 and that they now have a 900. <laughs> um, but that's the machine I started with, a small flatbed machine. And then I finally took the leap after having that machine for like mm, six-ish years um, to a free arm machine. I didn't get a multi-needle machine, but I got a free arm that's built like a multi-needle, but only has one, one needle. It's a single needle, free arm. So I bought the Brother PRS 100 Persona, Persona, I always say it wrong, um, back, when was that? The summer of 2020, I want to say. I finally convinced my husband, I'm like, I need this machine. <laughs> um, so it was a big investment for me um, at the time, but I absolutely loved it. It was, it was amazing. It was such a game changer going from a flatbed 
to a free arm machine. And you'll see what I'm talking about when I load the sweatshirt, if you're not familiar. This sweatshirt can be made on a flatbed machine um, at home. For an adult one, I think a six by 10 hoop would be nice so that you can get it to be 10 inches wide um, for an adult size shirt. Or if you have an eight by 12 hoop on a, a bigger flatbed machine. Also, if you have that small PE 800 type machine, the uh, it should work. The what's it called? The five by twelve multi positionable hoop might work for this project as well, depending on um, which project you're going for. It might not work with the applique font, um, but it would with the first two methods. Um, but you can still do this on a flatbed now. I bought the, the Persona in 2020 and they just came out with an updated version of it. And so I um, upgraded my old Persona for the new one. And the new name is called the PRX, no, PR1X Entrepreneur. Um, and it's built just like my Persona was, but they have a lot of uh, some good upgrades. And one of the biggest upgrades is that they increase the hoop size. So my old persona, the biggest hoop on it was eight by eight, which was great because I did a lot of children's projects. Um, but now I have an eight by 12 embroidery field, um, which is great for these more adult and bigger projects. So that's the machine we're going to be stitching on today. But like I said, this can be done on any um, machine. You just have to maneuver your material, the, the sweatshirt to where it doesn't get underneath your needle and your sweatshirt doesn't stitch to itself. All right, where am I going now? I'm going to in brilliance. So sorry, the screen's gonna look crazy for a second. Boom, okay. So now y'all should see my computer screen right now. Uh, unfortunately, I can't see any comments that come through while I'm working on here. So um, I will go back and look and see if y'all have any questions. Um, but here in, in brilliance, so this was, what I was using to make that um, test design for you. So let me open up a new one. And first, let's just go over how to make a lettering design. So we're gonna click this A up here and we get our three letters. And today we're doing Saints, S-A-I-N-T-S. -S. Hit enter and then I have a lot of fonts. So I hit L, so I scrolled down to the L's and here's my Lenny Penny font. So I have ribbon, chain stitch, and this is scalable. This is a native font. You'll notice there's no needle next to it. That's how I know it's a native font. All of the fonts that come with Brilliance, those purple ones, they don't have needles next to them because they are native fonts. These are all the fonts, Joe, that come with um, Merrily. You can see all of them here, right? But all these other fonts that I purchase, um, they come with a needle and they'll come in like this one comes in 0.75, 1, 1.5, all the way up to two inches. So this is all the same font in different sizes. With our native fonts, there's only one size. And so this is the chain stitch and this one is the scripty stitchy one. So this is the one I'm looking for. Um, and I'm gonna make it as big as it lets me. That's as big as it goes. If I click this button here, it will center the design in the hoop for me. But because it's a script font, I want them to actually connect. So I would just um, click the green box. And this is kind of a personal preference. This is like what kind of look if you want your eye to look like this or this. Um, and then click that green center box and just kind of connect your. And I'm looking like at the bottom, this line right here. So with these kind of fonts, they, they can be all over the place. Um, like it, it can go up and down. So you kind of get the look you want to go for with whatever um, name or lettering design you want to have. And that's it. So I would save this as a PES file. Um, if you're doing the option of having a cutting um, a cutting machine, you save that PES file and you're either going to send it to your brother Scan and Cut or you're going to open it in your Silhouette Studio software. So I have the business edition 
And so all I did was go to open and I opened the PES file. So if you look closely, it looks like stitches, you see? All right. Um, so let's continue with the option number one if you have a cutting machine. So I opened up my PES embroidery file in Silhouette Studio Business Edition. Next is you wanna select it and you want to go to this little star option here, which is the offset panel. I want to create an offset around this, an outline. So I'm going to click offset and it's going to be slow. This program is really heavy, I think, on my computer or the fact that I have like a million other things open is probably the problem. <laughs> this is my life and my brain, a million tabs open all the time. So that is thinking extra long. But when this works, there we go. Now you can tell it the distance. I want to say the uh, usual starting point is like 0 0.07 or 0 0.03, something like that. I increased it to 0.4. And you see how that goes all around it nicely? That You just kind of play with this until it gets the look that you want. All right. Um, and then I click the corners to be rounded and then apply. So now I've created a cut line of where I want my felt to be cut. Let's see, it's still thinking. Um, next, if you look at the particular design I'm making, we have these little tiny cuts in here. Now this one, definitely I would not want that there. These two are going to be personal preference on if you want the like your sweatshirt to show through in these little holes. That's completely up to you. So if you have some some things going on that you don't want to get cut out when you just want this outer line, there's a, a couple options. What I did was I selected my object. So you see I got it selected here and I right click and I go to release compound path because right now this outline and these little holes in the middle are all considered one thing. When I release this, now it's separate. Now these are individuals. The outline is one thing and these little holes are individual. So now I can go and select that hole and I'm just going to hit delete on my keyboard. I could select it and delete it. Um, I'll leave this one here so I can show you the other option. So once you have that, you're ready to cut it. And I'm going to go to send. And I have a silhouette Cameo 4, which has two carriages. One has the regular ratchet blade. And the second one has a rotary blade. I'm using the rotary blade. I think you can still cut felt with the, the ratchet, but I find the rotary one, rotary one cuts much better. Okay, let me test my theory here. I have this outline. You see right now it's set at no cut. If I go to cut edge, there we go. It didn't cut those holes. So you don't necessarily have to go delete those little holes. Just when you get to your cutting screen, select cut edge. And you want to pick your material to be felt, polyester felt. And because I don't have my computer hooked up to my machine right now, it's not saying anything. But I would, I would hook it up to my machine, machine and I would hit send and it would cut just on that blue line. And I'll get back to um, how to deal with all that in a minute. So let's take a break for a minute and let me check the comments. So was that a lot? <laughs> hey, Lindsay's here. Oh, thank you, Lindsay. She put, um, this is my link to her, to her website. She put that in the comments on Facebook, guys. Um, okay, so we're talking about persona. Any questions on the cutting? Okay, so Carissa has, does the scan and cut have the same feature? Yes. So on the scan and cut, I think you could literally have your PES file on your USB stick, plug your USB stick on the brother scan and cut, open it, and then they have an offset button. And so you just play with that offset button until it looks like an outline that you want. And then you load your felt. The, the scan and cut is going to scan the felt first. 
Um, so say you have, oops, sorry, my camera blinked. Um, <laughs> say you have a little tiny piece of felt, you could load it on your mat, it will scan it. And then you can make sure your design goes and cuts out right where your felt is on your mat. It will also detect the thickness of it. So you don't have to have any kind of um, setting. Like I had to tell my machine, hey, I'm cutting felt. I want you to cut it with this amount of force or blade depth and this speed and all that stuff. You don't have to do that with the brother scan and cut. It it automatically detects those things. But it it should be a much more straightforward process with the scan and cut in that you just literally plug in your USB with that PES file, open it up, create the offset, and just cut the offset out on the felt. Okay. All right. Norma said, can you put the link on? Let's see. Can I? No. I'm trying to copy the link, but I can't. <laughs> um, I'll send it to you, Norma. Don't worry. Uh, all right. Dawn says she was not able to check out. Are there any issues? The only thing I know, Dawn, is you have to have $10 in your cart for the coupon to work. But as far as checking out, I don't know. Um, I will let Lindsay get to you on that. <laughs> um, okay, so society, you, this is the really sad part. Um, Blaine did give me a scan and cut. It is in a box on my shelf over there and I have not played with it. And it's been a ridiculous amount of time. And I still am like, I don't know. It's, it's something in my brain. I think it's like, you got too many other things to do, Carly. You don't have time to play with that. But I, I swear I'm going to do it one day. <laughs> All right. Um, okay, we have another coupon issue. Uh, it might be that you need to have the coupon all in caps. Um, you can try that, Kathy, see if that's worked for you. And remember, you have to have $10 in your cart. And it can't be on a new release or, you know, something that maybe is already on sale or special promotion. It has to be the, the new release stuff is already on sale. And the, they're already cheaper than using the coupon code. All right. Yes, Patricia. She's saying, once I start, I'm not going to go back. I know. I know. I know. Okay. <laughs> All right. Let's go back to in brilliance. Nope, not in brilliance. Desktop. Now in brilliance. Okay. Let's go back here now. All right. So for our friends that are going to do option number two that don't have a cutting machine, this is all what we did already is all you need to do. Save that. Send it to your machine. However, you can if you have wireless or if you need to save it on a USB stick. All right, last option is the new applique font. So let me show you that quickly. So say I wanted to do Saints. So with the new applique font, I'm going to just type Saints, enter. And I'm going to click L, scroll down. And where is it? Right here, LP Stitchy applique. When I put everything in lowercase, you'll notice the first letter and the last letter, everything's open. And I love how it automatically connects everything for you. It was all open and connected. But I want these two to be closed. So what I do is when I type it, I actually put a capital S for the ones that I want to be closed. I'm going to hit enter. So now I see my last S is closed, right? You see it there. But... My first S is closed on the wrong side. So it's, it's closed over here. I want it to be over here. This is how you change it. You select it. Now go and hit the green box right over the letter you want to fix. Now just that one selected. Now I'm going to right click. And I have this alternate. And I think I want to click normal. Yes. So normal will give you the closing on the left side. Um, replacement will give you the closing on the right side. So I want normal for this letter. Oh, now look at this one. This one changed. I want replacement. There we go. So now it looks right. So now my scripty font flows and is all connected. Now there's one more step you want to do before you send this to your machine. Because when you look at this, it's still treating each letter at a time. So it's going to do the tack down, another placement, tack down, and that middle finishing stitch. Placement, tack down, finishing. We want it to do all the placement at one time. 
all of the outline for the second stitch and all of the um, inner stitch for the third time, right? So to do that, we will go to utility, color sort, and it's going to say this design has been reduced by five colors, and I'm going to hit new view. Now, so this was the first one. You can see down here all the color changes, right? This is the one I've color sorted. Now I can see all the uh, place down, uh, placement stitches is one time. All of the what's red here is the second. And then all what's blue is the third. So there will only be this is three steps, essentially three color, um, three color changes possibly. Um, so that is the last step you want to take before you send this design over to your machine. I think I covered everything. Let me know if y'all have any questions. All right. Okay, I see Lindsay helping people with um, the checking out on her website, Lenny Penny. Um, <laughs> people are telling me to open up my scanning guide. Yes, yes, yes. Um, all right, Norma missed how to do the sand and cut. It's super easy, Norma. Save your um, embroidery file on your USB stick, your PES file. Plug it into the scan and cut. It will open it, and there's an offset tool within your screen on your scan and cut, and you just um, make it offset the distance, that you, whatever you want. Um, in silhouette, what did I do? I did 0.4 inches is what I did in silhouette. Um, so I don't know what the scale is on the brother scan and cut, but something like that. Okie dokie. So yes, kittens, cozy creations. Kathy, hi. <laughs> um, I do not have a solution for a cricket yet. Um, but I'm going to keep playing with it. Oh, I forgot another thing you can do too. Do y'all just want me to continue? It's already been an hour and we haven't even started stitching it. Um, I have another solution too, but tell me in the chat if you want to hear this solution. Um, some really other fun ways to make embroidery designs where you have your design you want and then have the cool offset, but maybe create stitching for it instead of cutting, um, like a cutting machine. You can create a stitch line to go all the way around it. But with this option, you need to have enthusiast and brilliance enthusiast that's an upgrade and at least stitch artist level one there's an option if you just have stitch artist level one and no enthusiast but it's it's all done by hand it's automatically done if you have enthusiast and stitch artist level one okay i got some yeses <laughs> all right all right okay so let's go back to i need um Kyle, where is Kyle to make my cameras and computer screen? They do all things. They're a little, a little, a little. so in machines plus when they do shows, everything looks so nice. Um, and transitions are good where I'm a hot mess over here and I'm a one woman show. Um, okay. We are back in in brilliance. Let's go back to our saints design. Okay. Now say I wanted what I think would look really cute is to do this, but instead of using felt, use some glitter HTV or some really pretty faux leather as a, as a big offset background. All right. So step number one, make your design. We've done that. Step number two, go to utility and you have to have in brilliance, um, enthusiast to get this option. It's add knockdown stitches. All right. And you can choose the density and the stitch length doesn't matter, but the inflation is what's going to matter. So right now I have it at four millimeters. Let's see how that looks. All right. So that's kind of close. So how can I change no, I can't. Okay, so I'm going to delete that. 
hit delete on my keyboard. Okay, let's do this again. Now I'm going to go to utility, add knockdown stitching. Okay, let's increase this to, it lets me do five. Let's see if it lets me do like 10, 10 millimeters. Yeah, so that's bigger. So I keep playing with this until I got it to be really big. What I need is a conversion <laughs> from what is point? Uh, okay, utility. This is me just playing around until I get, oh, it will it'll only let me go up to five. Let's see, it won't let me go bigger. I can't do 15. No, it only let me do five. Okay, so this is what I have. Um, and then I would want to put this S closer. This is not turning out how I wanted it to. I just, I must have did it with something else. So I'm gonna move this S a little bit closer so that it, um, I don't have two separate things. Let's see how that looks now. Okay, so now it's all at least all connected. All right, so if I, I don't want to put stitch. I don't want to knock down stitch. I just wanted this outline is what I was trying to go for. Now, when you have stitch artists, you get this create button, click that, select your underlay. And now you can change it from being a fill stitch to a running stitch. So now I have an outline of my saints and I can go and look at the properties of that stitch. Right now it's just a single stitch. I can change it to a bean stitch. I can increase the length. Um, I can play around with how many times it goes back and forth. The more passes it goes back and forth, the more hand stitched it looks. So you can go all the way up to nine. But you can just play around with this until you get, um, and you'll have your outline. Right now you've created, you've taken your lettering design and you've created your own offset using stitching. And now I can send this to my um, machine. I would probably want to copy this. Where's my copy? Copy, paste. You want two of those, but I would change the color of this one to like yellow. Okay. And I would move this up. So you want to run the same stitch twice. For well, the first stitch, I would make it single. That's just a plain old running stitch. That's going to be my placement stitch. Then that's going to be, I'd lay down my faux leather or my HTV. And now I would have a bean stitch go around it. And then I can trim after that or uh, with HTV, you can even rip it away. Um, and then it would stitch the saints on top of that. So I hope that wasn't too much. Um, for some of y'all, that was probably like way too much. Um, for others, y'all know what I'm talking about. So um, sorry for that, but I hope that helps some of you. All right, I'm checking the, uh, the comments now. Okay. Let's see, Mary Ann. Yes, so I know some people that do have a Cricut, but use Silhouette Studio software. They prefer that software versus Cricut Design Center. And Mary Ann brings up a good point. If you have Silhouette software, but own a Cricut cutting machine, when you have the business edition of the software, you can do everything we did and then and because you don't have a silhouette, you would just save it as an SVG file and then send that SVG file to your Cricut through Cricut Design Center. So that's a really good solution um, for people that have a Cricut but use Silhouette Studio software. All right. Yes, Leanne, you are definitely right. There is a way to use an offset feature in Cricut Design Space. The problem is, is you can't open the embroidery file in Cricut Design Space to create that offset. 
that's where the problem lies. Um, oh, Janet says, if you have Stitch Artist Level 3, instead of using the, was it Enthusiast and the Knockdown Stitch, there is an Inflate option in Stitch Artist Level 3. Um, then you can create it to be as big as you want your offset. Very true. Um, okay. All right, lovely Axe, you may have answered this, but does the Brother PRX one work with Mighty Hoops? Yes, it does. Um, the only, my only issue now is I have to get the bracket. So I had a Mighty Hoop for my persona. I had an eight by eight Mighty Hoop and I have a five and a half by five and a half. Brackets on the side were made for the persona. Now that I have the PRX one, I need different brackets and it will actually end up being the same brackets for the brother six needle and 10 needle but i can just call mighty hoops and tell them hey i don't need a new mighty hoop i just need new brackets and they what they're only like 25 30 dollars i think and they will mail me the brackets so now they'll work with my new machine so i don't have to buy a new mighty hoop with it so that's an option for people that upgrade machines keep your mighty hoop just change the brackets and I think um, when you call them and you tell them coupon code Carly Bell, they'll give you free shipping. Okay, sorry, this is so long. Let's start stitching a sweatshirt. <laughs> All right, so let's get over here and get my space ready. So like I said, when I first saw that inspiration picture, um, I was like, okay, let's, let's see how we can do this with like fonts I already have and using felt. And, and for someone that has no fancy software and just wants to make the name and send it to the machine. So this is my method. This might not be the best method, but it worked for me. Um, it's a little bit going to be heavy stitching for your machine, but it worked perfectly fine for me. So I think it will work for you too. So the first thing you wanna do is figure out where you wanna put the design on your sweatshirt. Um, so you can do this in a few different ways. You can use, where is my grid? Um, you can use the grid that comes with the hoop to figure out right where you wanna put it. Um, you can use just a ruler. Um, and measure, you know, you want the top of the design. I go back and forth with how I feel about this, whether I want it to be three inches from the top of the collar or three inches from the bottom. I'm gonna go right here. So say like, I want the top of my design to be about right here, something like that. And then there's lots of ways to figure out the center. You can um, measure going all the way across probably be better if I had this actually flat because I have some on my my um, wool mat and some not <laughs> so this is about 15 so this would be my um, middle and I want this to be my top so I can put some kind of mark like that um, on my shirt and I'm using this new chalk pencil I got from All Stitched Up by Angela when we were, I think when we was at, I was at the um, applique getaway. But she's a quilt shop local um, right outside of New Orleans. But she has an awesome online shop. So th I, this is where I got it from. And it came with all these colors too. So it's a chalk cartridge set. This is the first time I'm using it. I, was, um, I realized when I started setting up, I'm like, oh, I'm using a black sweatshirt. I can't use my normal purple marker <laughs> I'll always use. Um, so figure out your placement. Now, like I said, I am um, using felt that I cut. So on my silhouette, I, I remember I made that offset for the Saints. I ironed heat and bond light on the back of my felt. I pushed it down on my cutting mat and I used this little rolly thing. I think it's called a Brer roller. Um, and I probably got this at Hobby Lobby, but I just rolled it down like that and then I cut it. And now that it's cut, I always check it too before I take it off 
the, um, the machine. I, I do this and make sure. So it cut and I can do this. And with the heat and bond light on the, the back of it, it makes it very easy so that you can just pull it off. Um, and you don't have all kind of fuzzies and felt stuck to your cutting mat. And there might be some areas where it didn't cut great and I can just use a, um, what do you call that? The X-Acto knife. I'll use this sometimes when I see areas that are not pulling like it's supposed to. I didn't cut all the way, but I could see where to do it. Pick this up before I cut myself. Okay, so that is my outline. I didn't cut those holes, and that's what I want my saint stitching to go right on. Now, cool. one good thing is when I do this, when I try to pull it up, the backing of the heat and bond stays stuck to my mat, but now I can pull off my felt. I have the heat and bond light stuck to the back of it, so now it's, it's ready to go on my shirt. The issue with this is that you have to put it in the exact spot for the stitching to go right where it should go and it look like it's supposed to. So my solution for this is I actually first stitch the Saints um, stitching, the, the design that we made. I'll stitch it on the shirt first. And now I have a guide. It's not the same as a placement stitch. It's not showing you the outline, but it's showing you right where the stitching is going to fall. And then I use that as a guide to place this right on top of that. And then I stitch it again. So that's where I'm like, this might not be the, some would maybe say I'm not doing this uh, very good <laughs> because I'm stitching the same thing twice on top of each other. But I did it on my tiger sweatshirt. I had no trouble with it. Um, so I think it's fine depending on the font and how heavy the stitching is. But you're going to be stitching right on top of it again. But I need to make better crosshairs. Let me find my grid. I don't know where I put it. Here it is. Okay. Sorry. All right. So I know I want the... Let me do this. Okay because I really want to make sure it falls where it's the height of my saints is where my mark is. I'm going to do something like this. Okay. Now I'm going to make sure everything is straight and I can tell it's in the middle. So this is where I want my crosshairs to fall on the machine when I load it. I can see those little dots. So this is the top of my design, but this is going to be the middle. And that's where I'm going to set my needle to go when I load it. That makes sense? Okay. Now we're going to hoop. Now, depending on the type of material you're using, um, you have a few different stabilizer options. Um, so, oh wait, I see Marsha X. So with dark material, sorry, my camera looks horrible. Here we go. Um, it's the pink and the black. They don't like each other. I'm using this chalk marker. I got not chalk marker, but chalk pencil from all stitched up by Angela, but this is great for dark and black fabrics. Okay. I'll try to find a link to that. I'm sorry, I decided to use that like a couple minutes before I started the live. <laughs> I wasn't prepared. All right. So now let me get my hoop. You have a couple options for stabilizer. Um, I put links to two options. One is the no-show poly mesh. I usually like to get the fusible option and iron that onto the back of my... Um, shirts 
Um, or with sweatshirts, I find also cutaway works well. Um, and this is not a super, this is not like a typical dense design. So this is my cutaway. Um, this is not a super dense design so that uh, I'm not worried about it needing to be fusible and the sweatshirts shifting around or anything like that. Um, so I find just a, a sheet of cutaways is, is good as well. So let me open this up. So we're going to put the hoop. Yeah, this part of the hoop on the inside of the shirt. And this is where, let's see, I do need to, before we start, let me remember to un loosen these up. They got two of them on this giant hoop. They got one in each of these corners. Can everybody still hear me okay? I'm worried that my microphone maybe not, might not be in a good spot. Tell me if you find I sound too low because I know I already talked too low. All right, so once the hoop is in there, I kind of feel where it should go. And I could take my bigger grid, it fits in the hoop. And this might be hard for you to see, but I can see my white lines and I can see like they're not lining up. So that's when you just kind of play the adjustment game. Oh, I forgot my stabilizer. Put your stabilizer in between your bottom hoop and the back of your shirt. Okay. I've also seen people where they wait, they just hoop the sweatshirt and they'll float the stabilizer under the hoop. That's also an option for you too, if it gets too tricky. But now, even if I don't hoop this right, there are ways on the machine to make sure you do have it hoop. You, it is going to stitch out. It's not going to stitch out crooked because I have those um, crosshairs on my hoop. So like I can see my center line lines up, but my horizontal line is like a smidge below the center point on my grid. That's not a big deal. Okay, so you can kind of tug on this a little bit just to make sure it's snug. The collar here sometimes messes you up, but just make sure everything looks good. And then once it does, you could go back and tighten those screws in those corners there. All right. So how's that look? That's good. Now I'm hoping for a free arm machine or what would be um, a multi-needle machine using the hoops with the brackets on the side. If you're hooping with a flatbed machine, um, you're then going to have to like pull all the material out, turn the shirt almost inside out to where you're not stitching the shirt to itself when you load the hoop on the machine. All right. So this is the PRX one. This is the new updated version of the brother persona. And it's funny because I didn't think they were going to necessarily update it um, because it was already a great machine. I didn't see how they could improve it. But I was wrong because they made the hoop size bigger. And that is a huge improvement. So big giant 8x12 hoop. I can load it through here, through the neck hole. And so the beautiful thing about a free arm machine is now the bobbin case is down here. All the rest of the shirt is hanging below it. And nothing is going to get stitched to itself on accident. That is the beautiful thing about a free arm machine. All right, so I'm gonna go to my USB stick and it's gonna think. And I'm gonna find, let's see, my Saints design is probably towards the end. Saints, there we go. 
So it's saying that the pattern extends outside that you need to return, uh, rotate it. So I'm gonna hit 90 degree rotate, but now it's upside down. <laughs> so I'm gonna hit set and hit rotate and rotate it again. Okay, so now it's going in the right orientation. I could see that on my screen. And this all depends on how you load your sweatshirt. Some people load their, their shirts upside down. So you want your design to be upside down. Um, but I loaded mine with the neck hole up here. So that is good. All right, now I want to move where it is. So let me hit embroidery. All right. So now I have my crosshairs and I can see them. Um, and one, another update from the old persona to the new PRX one is the old one just had like a one little dot laser light. This one now has like a laser light crosshair similar to the six and 10 needle machine has. So it helps get the alignment a lot better. Um, I can see that now and I can see my white crosshairs I drew and I can move this down. Um, and I can get those, my laser crosshair directly over my white crosshairs. So now I know it's going to stitch right where I want it to. Um, let's see. I have yellow thread loaded. My final one, I'm going to use black, but I won't be able to see where to put my stuff. So I'm going to stitch this out in yellow first. So I'm going to hit lock and make sure everything looks good and go. So for me, I'm using this as a placement stitch. I'm stitching it twice. I need black thread. Here we go. Now while this is stitching, I'm going to get my black thread ready. Over here. So it's got a thread, a thread rack with four spools on the back, but it still only runs one thread color at a time, one needle. Let me check the comments. Okay. All right, Marissa asks, does the cat frame work on the new machine? Yes. The cap frame, the brother cap frame is interchangeable between any of the brother free arm machines. It works on the Persona, the six needle, the 10 needle, and now the PRX one. Yes, Donette, I am live right now. Um, awesome, you are from the UK. I am from the United States in Southern Louisiana. Um, <laughs> Ooh, Norma brings up a great point. Okay, if you have a flatbed machine, um, something like the NQ 1700 or 1600 that has a six by 10 hoop, uh, a riser is also a great option because it kind of turns your flatbed into a um, free arm machine. And I, we did a sip and stitch on it. I don't know if Carol still makes the risers, but we did a sip and stitch on it on how to use it. If you look through my YouTube channel, you should be able to find um, one of my old videos on how to use a riser. Um, yes, Angela, I'm sorry the, the Lenny Penny links are not working. I'm gonna go fix them after the live is over, okay? I will try to fix those for you. Um, okay, I think that was all the questions. Yes, TMC Mommy makes a really good point. It seems like a lot of time and extra stitches to do it this way. Yes, um, if it was possible to change the stitches to a simple running stitch just to give me a placement, that would make life a lot easier. However, even if I have digitizing software, I can't go and change the stitching of a font that I purchased. Um, 
the only other option with digitizing software is to try and create myself a placement stitch, running stitch of where I'm going to put myself. But for me, this was the thing that came to mind first when I was like, okay, how can I get this look and make sure my felt goes right where I want it to? And that is by having some sort of placement. And that is because I'm using a cutting machine. You don't have to do this if you're using, if you don't have a cutting machine and you're just going to trim it yourself, like in the example we said at the beginning of the show. So this is that same font. All you can do is just lay down a piece of felt stitched directly on top of it and hand cut. It's because I used a cutting machine to try and get this Saints bubble out, uh, outline just how I wanted it, that I need a real good placement stitch on where it could put this. So you have options. If you don't want to do it the way I'm doing it on my sweatshirt, you can hand cut it. The, the trick with both of them is that you are going to want to put heat and bond lights on the back of your felt so that you can iron it into place um, when you're done stitching and cutting. So Karen, is there any way to make my PRS 100 into an 8x12 hoop? No, not that I'm aware of. It has a whole different, um, you see this? I want to say that's where this whole piece of the PRS 100 is different than on this machine. That piece is smaller. So it's, it's not even necessarily the, um, the hoop or the, or the, the, the hoop um folder or whatever frame um it's the actual machinery itself that allows for that bigger embroidery field so you can't update your old machine to make it bigger yes michelle makes a really good point but i have printed the design and used it as a guide yes um i thought about that as well i didn't actually try it because in my head I was like, okay, I can pin the, let's see. No, yeah, I think I was thinking about it backwards. I was thinking about taping or um, pinning the printout on the shirt and then figuring out the felt on top of it. But if I did it the opposite where I put the felt underneath the paper, that would work. It should, especially if you print it out like on regular copy paper, um, you should be able to see through and get your outline to be right. That's a much better <laughs> option probably than what I'm doing, Michelle. Let me see if I can print it out real quick because I have a printer in my um, in my craft room now. I can print it out real quick. Let's do that. Um, in my head, that, that didn't seem awesome, but let's let's play around with it while we're live. Okay. All right. So. Okay. Let's play around with Michelle's idea. All right. So I just printed this out from Imbrilliance. And the cool thing about when it prints it, it prints it with the crosshairs. So I can go and try and just cut this. And I want to, I don't need that crosshair. I'm just going to cut this. However. Oops. And just because this is regular old copy paper, I should be able to see through it good. Okay. See, when I was first thinking of this idea, I was thinking I needed to put this on my sweatshirt first. And then, but no, that's stupid. I should have been doing this. It's still a little bit hard though. Oh wait. 
I printed the wrong one. It's not lining up because I printed out the second one I made instead of the first one. Okay, let's let that one. This is not lining up, you see. Okay. All right, let's try this one. This is the one I made. Let's try this. Okay, so you have your printout. Still, it's good, yeah. Print it out. And then you would want to either spray some like um, temporary adhesive on the back of the paper or maybe just tape it. Something like this. Let me see. And for me, I'd want to hold it up so I could see through it, like through the light. Do I have y'all on the right camera? I'm not paying attention. Yeah, I do. <laughs> um, for me, like I want to hold it up to the light so I could see through it. Um, and that looks good. That looks good. Uh, maybe a smidge more this way. So that doesn't look bad. Okay, so we print out our design. I have my pre-cut felt using my cutting machine. Tape it on top. Now make your placement marks on your sweatshirt. And then pin this or tape this on top of your sweatshirt where these crosshairs match up the crosshairs you draw on your sweatshirt. Once you get all that in place, put it on your machine, make sure everything lines up here, and then, then move, remove your paper and stitch on top. So that's probably a better method than what I'm doing right now because instead of having it printed, I have it stitched. So I have my Saints design stitched and I'm using that as a guide to make sure that my stitching is falling right where I wanted to. And that's just be by pulling it away. So this was my first thought process on how to do this, but I like the paper. I think that's better. So don't listen to me. <laughs> All right. Yes. All right, so this is just doing that now. Oh, I, should, I wanted to have my iron. Um, uh, oh, you got a couple options. You can iron this into place now, or you can spray the back of it with this so that you can really, you know, peel it up and look and see right where you want it to be. Um, so that's your two options for making sure it stays before you start stitching on it or while you're stitching on it, it stays where you want it to be. All right. So I got my iron warm, warming up. I need to put my mat. Let's see, I can put my mat in inside my shirt or under the shirt. It doesn't matter. Okay, and felt is polyester, so it should have a high heat tolerance, but if you're worried about anything, 
on your iron, you can put a piece of parchment paper on top. Let's see. Okay. So big thank you to Michelle. You are awesome, Michelle. Thank you for that suggestion. Um, all right, uh, Janice X, does the Merrily program come with the Embrilliance package? So Embrilliance is the platform. They sell several programs. So you they're all individually purchased. Essentials is the one I suggest you start with. Merrily is gonna be an add-on. Enthusiast is gonna be an add-on. Um, Stitch Artist is a digitizing software. Um, if you're only digitizing and you're never opening up other people's embroidery designs that you purchase online or fonts, then you don't need essentials with Stitch Artist. But because I do both, I make designs and I purchase designs, I have essentials and Stitch Artist. So I'm just activating that heat and bond. So this stays where I wanted to. I didn't really activate. Might need to open up my big iron. Or you can heat press this after you've stitched it and got it out the hoop if you have a heat press. Yeah, it's better. Okay. So I'll press it again when it's done, but I just want to make sure it um, it's staying good while it's stitching. All right. So now, because I'm complicated, I'm going to go stitch on top of this again and stitch the saints. And now I'm going to do it in black thread. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right, and I'm going to change the thread color simply by cutting the yellow and tying the black to it. Sometimes my hands don't always, my fingers don't follow what my brain is telling them to do. Okay. Cool, and then. Alrighty then, and now I'm just going to stitch it again. Everything's already in place. I got my felt right where I want it. And that's it. Alright, let's go back and look. Let's see. So Pam asks, if you use HTV, would you need a placement stitch? With HTV, it depends on how you would do it. Are you, if you're pre-cutting it, then I would do the same method we just did with the paper. So print out, so make your offset, cut out your HTV. Um, I would think glitter would work the best. Um, cut it out, print out your design, cut out your printout like I did with the Saints one, put it on top of your thing, try to get it right where you want it to be, and then line that up on the placement marks on your shirt and iron it down before you stitch. So then you shouldn't need a placement. I think the whole thing for me was really trying to make sure my stitches 
fall right where I want it to, um, where my offset looks equal all the way around. Because to me, that was the whole point of pre-cutting it, was to make sure everything looks smooth and nice. Um, all right. Let's see. Oh, Eartha was talking to Karen. Was Karen the one that asked about making the... Yeah, Karen was the one that asked about making the Persona 8x8 place bigger. Um, yeah, so another option, and this is something I have, is the Durkee, um repositionable sturdy frame for the Persona and the Alliance. And that gives you an 8x14 inch um, embroidery field. And... It is a really cool frame to have, but you have to be able to split your design and software. You can use either PE design or you can use Embrilliance if you have Essentials and Enthusiast. Um, but one of the issues with having a multi-positionable frame is you're not gonna be able to do appliques or in the hoop projects. You're not gonna be able to split those. You're only gonna be able to split all thread designs. All right. Let's see. Society said the way you made the offset, then duplicated it, should also work to increase the offset slightly and make the placement stitch. And then no, stitch artist, you're talking about? Let's see. Oh, yes. TMC mom is like, I hope those were not fabric scissors. No, ma'am. The black handled scissors are my everything scissors. I have gold handled scissors for my fabric. <laughs> and my daughters know not to touch my gold handled scissors. All right. Yep. Michelle said we can use a straight pin and pin the paper and felt together. Um... Yes, Patty, we learn together. Y'all teach me so much all the time. I always get the most awesome suggestions for things uh, when we're doing tutorials. So that's why it's a community. We all help each other, and I love it. Um, let's see. Well, I missed a lot of questions. I thought I was at the bottom, but I'm not. <laughs> All right, so I see Karen and Eartha talking about the bigger hoop on YouTube. So, Patricia, are you asking if what, what are you asking is possible on the 8x8? I'm sorry, I'm confused. So Melissa asks, what if you stitch a placement stitch line using the outline of the background? So that is when you would need stitch artists. So if we did the project like I'm doing, so I... Um, I created the stitch file, I opened it in Silhouette, I made the offset. From Silhouette, let me show you this. Let's go desktop Silhouette. Okay, from Silhouette, I can, let me delete my Thing. Let me delete this. Oh, wait. Let me use the one I already had, actually. So this one. Yeah. Delete that. Okay. So just this offset. I could take this and save it as an SVG. And instead of this, I would change it to SVG. You have to have the business edition to save as an SVG. Oh, the, okay. 
Now I go to in brilliance. Open a new thing. Because I have stitch artists, I can create stitches and I can open a vector design like my SVG. Open. So there is my outline. So all I'd have to do here is add a running stitch. Oh wait, select, make it a running stitch. And just a real single, you know, single, easy, quick running stitch. I could do that. And now put my saints I made here. So I can copy that and then go here and hit paste. And so now I have it as a stitch file. I have a placement stitch for my felt and I have a my regular stitch to go on top. So if you have stitch artists, um, that's an option for you as well. So th there are so many ways that you can do this. So many ways. All right, let's go here. All right, and we are done. So this is my finished project doing it my more complicated way of stitching it twice. But I love Michelle's suggestion of printing it. Oh, this is the wrong one. Um, and making sure it's on top of your felt and then uh, either pin or tape or iron on your felt to your sweatshirt and line everything up before you take your paper off. So that's another option as well. So all kinds of ways you could do this, depending on what you have. If you have a cutting machine, if you don't, if you have stitch artists, enthusiasts, you know, lots of different ways. And then there's just the good old fashioned way of you only have an embroidery machine, then just stitch it out and cut it, cut it out yourself. So let's, I can't see what I'm doing. Okay. Um, sorry. Okay. So how do y'all like that? It looks good. See, I, to me, this is just right. My, my outline, my offset around everything looks just how I want it to. I really like the way this came out. So now I'm just going to take the hoop off and um, I could use just a wet paper towel to get those chalk lines off or a wet towel. Here we go. Oh, look at this. I got a saint's towel in my drawer. <laughs> Perfect. That's upside down. No, it's not. There it is. <laughs> These are the kind of things they give you when you go to the football game sometimes. Okay. All right. And then you can turn it inside out and trim away all of this extra cutaway. So again, not my fabric scissors. <laughs> and just make sure you don't accidentally snip your sweatshirt when you're trimming this. Oops, and not so close to the stitches like I just did. Now, one thing I noticed with the cutaway is depending on um, the, your design, like typically I would just do this. I would go straight across, right? But with the cutaway, I find it makes the sweatshirt stiff. So I'll go put my hand in there after to make sure I don't cut my sweatshirt and get a little closer to this area so that these scissors don't cut good at all. <laughs> so I got a little bit closer. like that. But yeah, just trim everything. That's my iron telling me it's turning off. And I can go back in here and get a little bit closer to this for me, it's just really making sure I'm not cutting my sweatshirt. 
because I've done that before and it's not fun. Okie dokie. I got a mess all over my table now. That's how you know I'm having fun. All right. So now I can go. My iron just turned off, so I'll do it again um, when we're done. But I can go and press this again to make sure my felt is securely attached um, to my sweatshirt. But that's all, folks. So now I have my Saints sweatshirt and my tigers <laughs> so they're both in the same font but just different stitching so this one's that um, more of a bean stitch hand stitch look and this is a chain stitch so both of them look really cute and then I haven't I've only done test stitches so far with the applique um, stitchy font um, I haven't made a shirt yet but that one's super cute too and Lots of fun things that we can make with that. So I hope y'all enjoyed this learning process for all of us. <laughs> all right, let's see. Let me check the comments. Yay, Sandra, I'm glad you enjoyed it. Um, the crafty Puerto Rican says she uses her duckbill scissors to cut the table. Is that a good idea? Um, I hear different things though. Like how do y'all feel about cutting stabilizer with your applique or fabric scissors. How do you feel about that? Cause I'm torn. Cause sometimes I'm like, that should be fine. That's not gonna dull my scissors. It's a wove, most of the time it's a woven material. Tearaways are gonna, well, you shouldn't be cutting tearaway anyway. Um, that's more of a paper-like material, but our cutaways and poly meshes, that should be fine, right? Let me know what y'all think, what's your opinion? All right. Yay, Kim. I'm so glad this was informative for you. That's my goal. I, and I know sometimes I get carried away where I, I want to give you all the options. <laughs> so I hope I don't overwhelm you, but zone in on what feels right for you, what, um, what you think is the best method, depending on your particular style, and then what machines you have, what software you have, all those kinds of things. So um all right, let's see. So Kim, oh wait. Okay, so Christine says she uses her fabric scissors to cut stabilizer. And then Sandra says, I don't cut any stabilizer <laughs> with my fabric scissors. <laughs> um, let's see, Jennifer, hi, from Hooked on Apple K. She said, I use my fabric scissors for the poly mesh. Um, and Karen's like, I'm chicken to use my good scissors. So uh, it all depends on the person. It all depends. So, okay, here we go. Oh, this is Miss Joanne Banco. She's the professional. She's going to know. Hi, thanks so much for watching. Um, she says, if you're cutting fabrics with poly or blends, it's about the same as cutting stabilizer. Thank you, Joanne. I'm so excited you're here. All right. So y'all heard it from Joanne. Okay. Yay. Dawn finally got the fonts to work. Yay. All right. And I'll go double check those links um, when the live is over. So thank you so much to Lindsay for um, having not, you know, amazing embroidery designs and uh, fonts for us to purchase, but also for giving us a coupon code. Thank you so much. So as a reminder, um, for those of y'all just joining in, um, you can use coupon code Carly to get 50% off of your purchase at Lenny Penny, which is where I got my fonts today. Um, and there's some stipulations at the bottom there. You need to have $10 in your cart before the code will work. And it can't be used on new releases. Those things are already on sale and they're a better deal. They're 60% off right now. Um, and this code will expire at the end of September. So that's your information on there. Um, I have links to almost everything down below. Um, if you don't see something you're looking for, you will see a link to the Sip and Stitch homepage. That is where I really dive into all the materials um, and things that I use. So you can always check out the Sip and Stitch homepage for information on whatever project that we're doing. And I update it when the next project comes out. Um, so y'all have that. Let's see. 
All right, Norma saying see you Tuesday. Yep, so if you are a VIP Sip and Stitch Squad member, we're going to be making um, this patch. This is your free design for the month. And we are going to dive into how to create your own custom patches using Embrilliance Merrily. So um, I look forward to seeing all my VIP members on Tuesday for our private Zoom class. Um, oh, Terry has a good, she uses a designated um, rotary cutter to cut her stabilizer. That's great. Yay, Patty say she enjoyed her sip and stitch fix. So glad you're here and was able to watch. Um, that's a good idea. Um, so Cindy says maybe invite Kai scissors. So that's one thing I'm guilty of. I actually don't own like a pair of Kai scissors or what's the other brand that starts with a G? Is it a G? Like the really good brands of scissors? I don't even own a pair of good scissors. I got these gold ones. Um, I want to say they're the, here we go, Westcott brand from Walmart. <laughs> um, and I just only use them for fabric. So uh, I don't even have like a very expensive pair of scissors uh, myself. But if I got some, I do want to make sure I treat them right and only cut certain things with them. Let's see. All right. Ginger, that's it. Thank you, Joanne. So Ginger is the um, other very nice brand of scissors. All right. And Kai, yeah, I heard of Kai. Ah, she says Westcott actually does make good scissors. Yay. So I didn't do too bad. All right. Um, yeah, so Dawn says she would love to see this with some glitter vinyl. So yeah, I'm going to keep playing with this and um, probably make my girls. I know Elise has um, at her school on Mondays, um, she has Saints dress down day to where she could wear a Saint shirt with her uniform uh, skirt. So I need to make her another Saint shirt. So I think I'm going to play around with the, cause she likes some glitter. <laughs> so I think I'm gonna make around with making her one with the HTV glitter and then just put it on a normal t-shirt cause it's too hot down here to wear a sweatshirt. So I will take pictures of that when I make it and I'll post it on Facebook and Instagram so y'all can see. All right. So any more questions before we're done? Um, I can tell you if I look at a calendar. Oh, Lord, my daughter's texting me. Um, let's see. Next month is going to be Friday, October 20th is going to be our next sip and stitch. Um, I haven't decided on what project I'm going to do yet, but if you have something in particular you would like to see, um, you can always let me know by posting in comments or emailing me at car uh, here we go hello at carlybell.com um you can always email me your suggestions of things you would like to see um it's probably going to be a fallish halloweenish project we're going to be close to halloween but not quite there um and then right after that we're going to be getting ready for the sip and stitch holiday workshop so that is going to be um, a paid for workshop that i do this is going to be the third year i do it um, and it's going to be a week long of Zoom classes every day um, on a different type of holiday project. And I usually um, have some of my really good digitizer friends make some exclusive designs for me um, for the holiday workshop. So stay tuned to more for more details on that um, coming soon. Let's see. All right. Let me check. <laughs> I love doing Okay. She says she loves her Kai curved tipped for embroidery and Kai pinking shears. And she has almost one of everything and she could go on and on and on about um, scissor brands, but she's going to stop. But thank you, Julian. We appreciate you. All right. So, okay. Really quick. Patricia says, what kind of felt? So this is just regular old craft um, polyester felt. Nothing special. So I've gotten packs before from the craft store. And then, oh, let me show you this really pretty pack. I think this is the one I linked. Um, I got this pack from Amazon. And I like it a lot because it's like, it's heathered. Let's see if you can see. Um, they're all heathered colors, but they had some really pretty colors um, in this pack that I got from Amazon. And I think that's the one I linked for y'all if y'all want some pretty um, different felts. Um, 
to try out. Okay. Uh, thank you, Karen. <laughs> um, usually when my little girls, um, when I used to do Sip and Stitch at night and my little girls would come um, bombard the video, they, they were my hype girls. They were like, make sure you click thumbs up and subscribe and all the things. So thank you, Karen. <laughs> oh, thank you, Joanne. All right. Yes, that's uh, Patty saying that's really pretty felt. Um, oh, Kim says she likes my sign. So um, I got this at Hobby Lobby. This is fabric attic. I wanted to hang it up on my wall, but I don't know. I'm running out of room. So I have it right here for now. <laughs> so, all right, guys. Well, um, thank you so much for joining me today. I hope you learned something um, and that you join me next time. So we're going to get together again. What I said, October 20th um, will be our next sip and stitch. But in the meantime, I have all of my previous lives where I think we're like on number 70. I think this was like number 76 um, of previous Sip and Stitch tutorials that you can go back and watch the replays anytime. Um, you can visit my website, carlybell.com. And then for more tutorials from me, um, I have my VIP membership group. I have a, if you're brand new to embroidery and kind of don't know where to start, um, I have a beginner course on machine embroidery called From Start to Stitch. You can find more information uh, on that, I think, in the links below and then also on my website. And then my newest thing I have out is not a tutorial per se. It's got tutorials in it, but an organizer. I have developed a new system to in, uh, organize all of my embroidery designs. And uh, you can see that and get more information uh, at carlybell.com. So thanks so much for joining me today. I hope to see you next time and have a great rest of your Friday and weekend. Bye, everybody.